Hi guys, Monica of Monica of the Lion from Twitch and YouTube and Snapchat and Instagram and literally other social media aspects that are out there in this world, even maybe MySpace, I don't really know. Um, I thought I would make a fun little video um, and I had you ask me questions on Twitter and on Snapchat and um, Periscope and Twitch. Um, about anything gaming related so I thought I would do a fun little YouTube AMA in like the past sort of thing um, about anything gaming related and me so that way you get to know a little bit more about me um, sometimes I don't get to answer questions like that on Periscope or on Twitch um, or Twitter because things go by so fast and I already don't see them or some shit just hits the fan and I just miss it um, so I thought I would make a fun little video so one of the questions that I got and the first question that we'll start with is my favorite game and why. Um, and that one's super easy and if you have watched me for long you obviously know my favorite game in the entire world um, is a game called The Suffering. And why is, I don't know why because it's really sad and twi twisted, demented game, but I love it because um, for some odd reason, I am really into like really dark games like that and this game, I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's about like you're an inmate um, and you go to this prison where turns out all of the like inmates are being tested and some people are like gas chamber tested, some people are limbs getting chopped off, putting knives all up in them. It's just weird, uh, but it's awesome and cool and I love it. Um, and a weird story about that, so this just cool little like side chunk of information, was I just got back from PAX Prime in Seattle, uh, like maybe a couple weeks ago, and I had the weird, crazy, like Twilight Zone ex opportunity to meet the creator and the designer, and basically the baby daddy of this game, like the god of this game, um, and his name is Richard Rouse. Um, and I just, I was going to different panels every now and then from PAX. Um, I was, went to a couple of Twitch panels. Um, I'm also a voice actress, so I went to some voice actors, uh, voice acting panels. And it, I just sat down, you know, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go to this one. It's perfect time. I need to rest my feet. I was in cosplay, had high heels, the higher than I am. I'm 4'9". Um, I had like this big old heavy bra that was like just killing my neck. So I just sat down and I was like, you know, listening and having them like, I was getting tips from them and all that stuff. Well, all of a sudden, um, they say the moderator, Richard Rouse, and I was on my phone. I looked up and I was like, no, I cannot be the same. Not the same Richard Rouse, there's just no way. Um, and they introduced him or whatever and he was just like, hi, you best know me from like, the game The Suffering that I've done. And I literally lost my mind. Like I was literally on my phone and I heard Richard Rouse and I looked up and then he was like, you best know me from the suffering. I was like, oh my God. Like I freaked out. Oh, I spit everywhere. Freaked out. I fangirled like crazy. And I don't really fangirl all that much. I mean, but like I fangirled with him. I was like, holy crap. Like I am in the room. And I even tweeted about it. I was like, holy crap, you guys. I am in the room with Richard Rouse, like the creator of my favorite game. It was crazy. Um, and I was just like in awe, just staring at him. <laughs> um, and... I had no questions at all, but at the end of the thing, they asked like, okay, does anybody have any questions for uh, the panelists or the moderator? And nobody had questions for Richard Rouse. Everybody had questions for the panelists, which is cool, I understand. But I didn't even have questions for Richard Rouse. I just was like, there'd be no way I could go up to the mic and be like, hi, um, you don't know, but that game saved me and I love that game and it was one of my favorites and it just changed my life because without that game, I wouldn't be where I am right now. It's just, I didn't want to say that because I would feel like such a loser. So I tweeted, at, I tweeted kind of like at him, but just overall about the panel. And I was like, I don't even have questions for Rizzo Routes. I just want to like go up to him and give him a huge hug and just tell him how much like that game meant to me. Well, Later on, I left that panel, I had to go to the bathroom, which, I mean, if you're not a cosplayer, you gotta rip off all that stuff and, like, take it all off and whatever, and I was sitting down to pee or whatever, and I got, like, a thing on my phone, and uh, I was like, Richard Rouse liked your tweet, and I was like, what the hell? And then, it, like, I was just like, oh my god, he liked my tweet, I was so excited, I was about to call my mom, I was about to, like, you know, freak the hell out. Well, then, I get, like, another tweet that said, like, to your tweet and I freaked out I was like holy crap if I wasn't already sitting down to pee I would already pee like right now at this very second 
And I read the tweet and he was just like, oh, that's so funny. Like, don't be shy. Like, come, uh, I, would, I would have loved to like sit and chat or whatever. Come by my booth tomorrow, blah, 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 the time or whatever. And I like lost it. I was like, oh my dear sweet Jesus. And so like, I mean, there was no way I was gonna miss that opportunity. So like I went to the panel or I went to his booth, like I was all shy, I was in my cosplay, boobs like coming out everywhere. And I was just like, um, hi Richard, um, I was the person on Twitter. I was super like awkward giraffe about it. <laughs> I'm like already awkward giraffe about everything. Uh, but I was like talking to him, I was like, I just wanna let you know like your game meant a lot to me. And like, uh, and then I just mumbled everywhere and stuttered everywhere. It didn't even make sense of what I was saying. And, and that's because I had a whole like written script that I wanted to ask him a bunch of questions like what was he thinking in the process and all of this stuff like why prison why this and like none of it came out because all that came out was like bleh and drool and it was just awful um, and that was my story of why that happened. I went on a tangent there for a second but it's important you must know. It's a big game for me. Um, but that leads into the next question of which is what is my favorite genre and why and obviously um, it doesn't, it may not seem like it because I'm just like a, you know, glittery filled blob, girly, pink, beautiful, pink and girl and glitter is just everything. But horror is my uh, favorite type of game. I mean, I will play the thrill that you get and that adrenaline rush of like, holy crap, like you're holding onto your controller, it's vibrating, you know some shit's going on behind you, but you don't want to look, but you gotta look because if you don't look, I mean shit's just gonna grab you. It's just, that is like my favorite thing, that like adrenaline, like your heart like beating out of your chest, like you having to pee, wearing diapers and shit because you're gonna pee yourself. It's just the best thing ever, I love that. Um, one of my favorite like horror games that I've played recently, besides Layers of Fear, because that game, I mean, great like beautiful like game it just but no <laughs> outlast whistleblower is probably one of my favorites that i've played recently um and actually not to bring up the suffering again richard rouse if you're watching this i love you um but the protagonist or the antagonist or whichever word that fits best with the main character um <laughs> All of the, 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 whatever, they always seem to be like good looking, or I don't know, maybe it's just me. But um, the main person in the suffering, his name was Torque, um, and you got to see little glimpses of him every now and then, and he was just gorgeous, like, I mean, his persona, his personality, minus him being a killer if you decided on that route, no spoiler. Um, just everything about him was just so, like, perfect. And the same thing with uh, Outlast Whistleblower was that you meet Eddie Gluskin and he is this like perfect gent is what I like to call him because he was like in a top, like a like, button up shirt, a vest and like nice slacks. He had like his hair all prim and proper and he was just like the gorgeous, like super cute. Um, and you fall in love with these characters and yeah, sure they're creepy and evil and they want to kill you or in Eddie Gluskin's case, like marry you, you know? But like, it doesn't matter, they're great. And that had nothing to do with why they're my favorite genre, but it's just like that creepy, like eerie sort of, aspect i just really like it and the majority of the times they've got like a beautiful backstory of why they're so demented and why they're so twisted and i really really like it some of the other games that i really enjoy is probably uh obviously legend of zelda i mean if you take a look around my room which you can't because there's a green screen here but if you take down the green screen um there's a huge poster of majora's mask back there um the skull kid and I have the Master Sword that I'm staring right at right behind me, um, or behind you, and I've got, you know, links on the floor, I don't know what he's doing, but he's probably, like, I've got a Link plushie and an Eevee plushie, and they're both, like, on top of each other for some odd reason, um, and, I mean, the B Bioshock, obviously, was supposed to be streaming Bioshock, but something went down with Twitch, as you all know, as I, like, had a huge rant about it on Periscope and Twitch, um, and Twitter. Um, I've got Songbird just chilling here because he was supposed to be like my guide and protect me from, you know, all of the evil in Bioshock, but you know, he didn't. So, um, next question, because I can go on a tangent for that, is when did I start playing video games? And that was, I mean, a long freaking time ago. I started with, um, one of the first games I played was uh, Tomb Raider on the PC. My uncle had it. Um, so we just played that for a while. And then the next game that we played was uh, Doom. Um, which I was, I mean, I loved, but I just wasn't good at it. So I just stopped playing it. Um, and then we, you know, we moved from like 
um, the PC to uh, the PlayStation, the first one. Um, and I played Pong, I have, which, I mean, not like the original OG Pong, but like this one was like a cool like adventure Pong where you can go like the jungle theme or like an Arctica theme or like they had like these little Pong things that had their own personality, it was great. Um, so that was probably, uh, I mean, I started playing like Sega was one of the original ones too. Uh, one of my favorite games that I had played um, from Sega was this one called Streets of Rage, which you can play as a female. Um, and I'm all about like strong female roles, you know, like it's just great that you can play as a female. And this was the theme song. And it is my ringtone, which is not nerdy or lame at all. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, like, though that game was, like, pretty freaking fantastic. I loved it, um, and that was from Sega, and then from Sega, it went from, like, Nintendo 64 with DK, or Donkey Kong 64, which I can rap the entire Donkey Kong rap. Uh, he's the leader of the group. You know him well. But if you ever need somebody to rap that for you, I'm your girl. Um, and after that was, I mean, PlayStation just... It just, I started really young. I mean, maybe like maybe seven, six, it doesn't, I mean, I don't even remember. It's just as long as I can remember. Um, uh, so yeah. And one of the other questions that segues into that was what was my first game? And that was Streets of Rage. Um, and um, it was just great. I loved it. And the last question that I will have for this little excerpt was um, why gaming? And it's just, a, there has been no community. First off, just the like, you get to be out of reality for a little while while you're playing video games, which sounds so cliche and stupid, but you really do. Like, you get like, especially if the, and I'm really big into like puzzle strategy, like storyline driven games, because like you get to leave like your crazy ass world and go into like, I mean, mine's still crazy ass because I love horror games that, you know, are super demanded, but like you get like a little piece of like, get out of here into reality and like, this is new, your new reality, which is crazy, and I love it. Also, like, the gaming community is just so, like, different from any other community that I've been in. Um, I mean, like, I went to PAX, and I did cosplay and stuff like that, and instead of people, like, making fun or, you know, like, how if I were to do that, you know, in some other, like, random thing, um, like, everybody was super accepting and they were just like oh wow that costume like it took you a while to make and I'm like yeah and like same thing for them I was like wow like it must have taken you forever to do that weapon or something like that and like everybody's just so supporting of everybody nobody wants anybody to like fail or like be made fun of or anything like that and if they if they those people do happen to like you happen to run into them they're not really a part of the gaming community they're just there um, you know and because in all of the things that I've been through with like twitch and um, Twitter and Periscope and like cosplaying and different comic cons and like any type of those kinds of event I've never met anybody that has been like super rude or like obnoxious to me Everybody's like very supporting and very like they want you to like exceed and I want to do that too for other people um, And be like a good role model and show people that like you can just kill them with kindness But you don't have to be like this. Oh, you can be like a crazy ass bitch um, but still, like, you know, like, help other people, like, move to their next level, too. Um, and I'm, I mean, no other community has been like that but gaming. For me, anyway. In my opinion. And for me, like, it's never been like a, oh, you're a girl gamer. Like, what in the world? You're just, you just, why don't you just, eh. It's always been like a, you're a gamer and that's it. Like, there's no, like, separation between the two of, like, male gamer and a female gamer because I'm just as good as them boys but I can still be a girly ass bitch and hence this um, and you know this Bioshock like my life I got shit everywhere of Bioshock um, which didn't make sense with anything but anyway that's just a little insight of me um, and I thought it would be fun to just you know get to know me a little bit more on a different level than um, streaming or on like Periscope or Twitter and stuff like that. This is just like a different thing. So I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I totally would not mind doing this on like, you know, a couple monthly basis or whatever. Uh, maybe in a couple months, 
see like where I'm progressing and difference from like then and now. I mean, I'm in Texas right now, but in a couple of weeks, I'm making the big move from like down Texas to all the way across the like United States to Seattle, Washington. So I'm gonna start my new journey in Seattle and I'm excited and I'm nervous and I'm like scared and I'm freaking stoked about everything. And I'm excited to take you guys along with me and like start this journey that's gonna be crazy. Um, and I can't wait to see what we grow into. So thank you guys for watching and thanks for submitting the questions and stuff, especially on such a late notice. So I appreciate it. And I love you guys, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!